summer of 72. Picture the scene. Puppy love was top of the charts. A pint of beer cost 13p, and you could buy an Arsenal player for a wad of used fivers. Well, some things never change. Now, how about some football? Brian Clough's unfancied derby had stunned their big-name rivals by winning the championship back in May. But old Big Ed was still not a happy man. What the hell this town derby wants, I don't know. I don't know whether derby's big enough for us. And if they're not, then we'll move and block. Um, players, management, coaches, I'll even take my chairman with me. For Don Reavy and Leeds United, recriminations about another year of so near and yet so far. So you set a bit of energy, give them no room, and that was it. But they all at sea. All right, it's a pretty good cross for the second goal. Right up to the far post. Great cross. Good to do without everybody. But Bill Shankly's latest Liverpool side looked quietly confident. With former captain Ron Yates, the colossus of the 60s side, making way for a new defensive giant, Larry Lloyd. Shankly was in no doubt about the reason for Liverpool's success. It's, it's born, in born. All players are born. And anybody tells you that they can make players, then they're, they're very, very stupid people. The first test for the new Liverpool lineup came at Anfield against Manchester City, Malcolm Allison's star studded contenders. Second time that Davis has won out in the air over Larry Lloyd. Highway and book. Highway space. All is square. Number eight. Champions Derby was a faltering start. Defeat at Norwich was followed by the visit of Chelsea. Harris. Beautifully hit shot by Ron Harris. O'Hare. Durban. Hector. Durban moving into the middle. Joyce header. Here's Walker. Now Hector. Good, holding it nicely, finding Garland! That's the best goal of the game in the way that it was worked. Looking on from the stands, Derby boss Brian Clough was not impressed. Never one to mince his words, he called the supporters a disgraceful lot and attacked the club's own directors. With sound bites flying in all directions, the FA told Derby County to shut the Clough up. Arsenal took their 100% record into September as Chelsea visited Highbury. The quality is good. Osgood, Houseman, Cook. Yes! Simpson. Redford has moved out to the right. Graham. Of 
While Charlie was the darling of the North Bank, he was becoming a marked man. As this clash against Derby shows, he was starting to attract attention for all the wrong reasons. I would hate to see Charlie George getting a sort of reputation now that in five or six years' time he'd be trying to live down because I had a reputation I picked up about 10 or 12 years ago. And it's very difficult to live reputations down. Leeds, looking as strong as ever, headed for St James's Park and Newcastle. Two is David Craig. McDonald's. Oh, and a great start. Jimmy Smith, the scorer. Tremendous buzz still going round the ground. A three-sided ground these days, of course. Clark. That's aimed. Oh, a fine goal, too. A goal by both number eights. Alan Clark. Jerry took his eye off it and didn't get it right. Here's Barraclough taking on Norman Hunter. Very simple goal, John Judah, who headed it in. Cherry, whose mistake started that Newcastle goal. And Tudor came back then with Reaney. It'd be interesting to know who was supposed to pick up Tudor because he looked pretty well unmarked as he headed in. Here it comes, now you have Joe to score! Mixed up between Young and McFall, and it's absolutely raining goal at St James's Park. Great for Newcastle. Smith. Tudor, as well to resist the challenge. Gibb. A five-goal thriller raised the stakes as the Football League went into bat for more money from its television deal. What the Football League Management Committee wanted to get were the reactions of the League Club Chairman to their proposal, reducing the number of League Clubs, altering the number of sides promoted and relegated each season and possibly cutting down the hours of soccer shown on television. I think you get it far too cheaply and I would go to the two extremes. I would either say you give us a fortune or I personally wouldn't let you have a two-minute clip. The league table at the end of September showed Liverpool and Arsenal setting the pace but little to choose between the top six. The cop is on song as BBC's Panorama programme goes in search of football fever. Liverpool's cop is filled with some of the most passionate fans in the world. It's largely they who make their own stars, just as they provide the club's income. But they can reject their stars too, because the fans ultimately demand success from the team with which they identify. And there's a special welcome for Everton in the season's first Merseyside derby. Kenya. Lindsay. Keegan waiting in the middle, so is Cormac. So now is Lawler. Cormac! One of the new boys opens the scoring. And the cop go wide. In celebration. But it's gloom and doom at Old Trafford as United languish near the bottom. Spurs arrive in Manchester with England star Martin Peters in dazzling form. The better you look, the more I want you. Straight through to Peters, Stepney coming out. Tremendous personal performance by Martin Peters. 
In the league, Liverpool were now a point clear of Arsenal, with Leeds moving ominously into third. Can you tell us anything about the accident, or is it all a blur? Well, it is. I just can't remember anything. I just remember getting in the car and going home and then, you know, waking up here. So there's a decision made. There's a question hanging over your football career. How do you feel about that? Well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have to um, accept this, uh, you know, when it comes, when, when, when the time comes. Uh, if the worst comes to the worst, then uh, something that uh, I've got to overcome. And I hope I will do. A World Cup winner with Sir Alf in 66, Gordon Banks was one of the all-time greats. His save against Brazil in Mexico may be the greatest ever. Only left foot was standing. Hooray! What a save! Gordon Banks! Take that out of the net! And that's the danger for England, split by a quick raid. And this the save of the World Cup. How it came back, even Gordon Banks won't know. Pure reaction, sheer brilliance by the world's number one goalkeeper. Lean on me. The wave of public sympathy following his accident confirmed his status as not just a world-class keeper, but one of the nation's favourite sportsmen. Cruelly blinded in one eye, he fought back bravely to play in charity matches. But it was not to be. Till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. Stoke City's famous keeper officially retired at Anfield before his side's game against Liverpool, amid a huge ovation from the cop. Liverpool were still flying high when they went to face a Manchester United side desperate for points. Done to Charlton. McDougall, appeal for hands not given. Davis! Charlton. Best. Neil on a run. I'm very pleased, of course, very pleased that, um, you know, I'm free to play my games now and it's a weight off my mind and I can just get on with the game now. How do you feel, Mr Lloyd, on behalf of the Players' Federation about the use of a film clip? Well, I think it's essential. It would be very difficult to just for a player to justify his case without the use of television evidence. By late November, the championship race was taking shape, with Liverpool, Leeds and Arsenal leading the pack. All the things that we've been through You should understand me Like I understand you Now baby, I know the difference Between right and wrong I ain't gonna do nothing to upset our happy home. Oh, don't get so excited when I come home a little late at night. Cause we only act like children when we argue for some fun. Hey, hey. If you don't know, if you don't lie, lie. Never... 
favourite for the job, Tommy Doherty, was giving nothing away. I'd heard that perhaps a meeting was being arranged between yourselves and the officials. Well, if you time. have, could you let me know when it is, would you please? And Are you in fact going to be arranging? I don't know. Uh, I don't know really. If they did approach you, would you seriously consider taking a job with Manchester United? Uh, I don't know. I've got to wait until they approach me. Well, you must be thinking about it. It must be in your mind. It's you that's thinking about it, you know. Well, All you I obviously know you... that an offer could be on the cards. Yeah, that's true. I would say that's true, yeah. And if an offer did come along, what would your reaction be to it? I wouldn't like to tell you that. Thank you very much indeed. Well, we're off the record. It's your job to ask questions. It's my job to avoid them. Oh. Sorry if I haven't not embarrassed you in any way. For once, words had failed him. But three days later, the doc was confirmed as United's new manager. Basically, it was a club in decay. And I felt very, very quickly there was too many of the European Cup winning team of 1968 were still at the club, past the sell by then. Some of them were very, very good. People at Bobby Charlton helped me tremendously, and as much as he decided to retire pretty quickly, uh, I'd had to have made that decision, which never would have been a popular one. Uh, we gave Dennis a free, uh, and it was just a gradual clear out. Doherty's United were lying in 20th position in the league as Leeds visited Old Trafford for his first game in charge. Ball. It's a fair ball for Moore to Morgan. Morgan making his presence felt out here on the right. McDougall! Charlton is up, won by Wynne Davis. Maidley, the flag is down, here's Clark, and he scored! The two pictures of delight and despair. Liverpool at Anfield were proving invincible. Crystal Palace were the latest victims. Cormac up! Great goal by Cormac! By Christmas, Liverpool were two points clear at the top, with plenty to celebrate. We were a team ready to explore. We had great players, we had a great team spirit, we had a great stadium, we had a stadium frightened, everybody frightened to death to come from Anfield. And we had a manager who was the best ever. I'm going our way. Comedian Norman Wisdom was the star turn at the club's Christmas do. Away, away, away. Grandchildren. I'm going away, away, louder, away. Of in over 10 years, there must be averaging about 45,000 yeah. people. That's interesting. Now, this is the cop up here, isn't it? That's the cop up there. Because That's I the can, famous cop. I can never get over. When you see them yeah. on television, yeah. it looks like a sea, doesn't it? They're exactly. all going exactly. like Exactly. <laughs> and now they don't all go down and hurt it's each other. True. I don't it's know if they're lost true. or <laughs> But they're not looking where they're going. Oh, they're no. looking the ball. That's right. They don't care where they're going as long as they see the ball. As long as they've seen it going This in, is true, Norman. I work to all our friends. To the music that never ends Clark's gold luck kept Leeds on track as they beat Man City by three. Arsenal, on a roll, have the chance to leapfrog Liverpool and go top themselves. All they have to do is win at Anfield. It's Callaghan. Brilliant run by Callaghan. It all went too far. The run was better than the end product. McNair. It's Kennedy versus Smith. difficult for defenders, but really a fairly clear-cut situation. No doubt, the cop roared, balls 
stayed cool and it fairly sizzled into the stanchion at the back. Hughes. at the target and he's got it he's got two against one Kennedy's there and now he's by himself Clements right out and that is 2-0 so seven corners apiece one goal apiece and McClintock up for the set piece still in the FA Cup Arsenal travel to Carlisle in round five for trying to make it, McClintock! What news of Carlisle? They won 3-1! <laughs> for once, the great Eric Morgan got something wrong. But then what would you expect from a Luton fan? The shock of the round came at Sunderland, where Bob Stokoe's second division side put out Malcolm Allison's much-fancied Manchester City. That is my greatest memory of the of the cup run. We played Manchester City off the park. We beat them 3-1. They had Franny Lee and Colin Bell, all, all the star players of that particular time, and we beat them very, very convincingly. And it was lovely to shake hands with Malcolm after the game. Don't take your love away from me. Don't you leave my heart in misery. If you go, then I'll be blue. It's breaking up this heart. I was mentally stressed out. I needed a rest. I mean, we'd been so successful and so much work and so many, so much involvement for me. That I, re I mean, I don't, I didn't realise then, but I realise now that I lost my motivation. One manager not lacking motivation was Liverpool's Bill Shankly. His team ready to face Everton at Goodison Park. Down. Two, shut up. Four, five, six. Up. Get your head down. Do your bloody exercise. Four. Callaghan. Hughes moving forward, number six. Evelyn Hughes. In the 80th minute. Bosmer, Lindsay waiting. Keegan going. Leeds, in third place, were up against the Derby side, battling to live up to their mantle as reigning champions. And Bolton has got it at last. And that's a penalty. And it had to be given. Lorimer was floored quite unnecessarily. Giles. went down and what's the referee given? He was pushed, he's given another penalty. Now Lorimer, who's limping slightly, is going to take this kick, his second penalty. Two-two. Maidley. But Brian Clough's side were made of sterner stuff at Highbury, as second-place Arsenal looked to make up ground. Oliver will take a free kick, and Derby have got men over here. Davis to Powell. It's so simple. Late February, and it's tight at the top. Liverpool and Arsenal share the lead, but Leeds United can join them with games in hand. See how I'm walking, see how I'm talking, notice everything in me. Feel the need, oh, feel, feel the need in me. I need you by my side. To you can make it, but what's the need?
Sunderland are in the semi-finals. Sunderland into the semi-finals to face the winners of Chelsea and Arsenal, who meet at Stamford Bridge. Osgood. Kemba, and it's Kelly in the way. Osgood. 1-0. And only players like Osgood take goals like that. You don't blame goalkeepers. You congratulate the scorer. Rice. McClintock. Oh, that's trouble. And a tangle, Kennedy. And George. Arsenal beat Chelsea in a replay and travelled to face Sunderland at Hillsborough, where an upset was in the air. Oswell again, looking for Hallam. Lockley is there, Wilson coming out. That's too short! Hallam round Wilson, he must score now! Yes, and the underdogs go in front! Arsenal fought back, but the underdogs were resolute, with goalkeeper Jim Montgomery inspired. Coming across again to Armstrong. Covers there. Brilliant save that came off Vic Hallam. And how Montgomery got to that, Sunderland perhaps will never know. A really tremendous save by Jim Montgomery. Kerr has Stewart on the near post. Porterfield there as well. Stewart, huge! He said he'd score and he has. Wilson caught in no man's land. And just look at those Sunderland faces. It's going to be Johnny Giles with the call. Bidding for their third cup final in four years, Leeds met Wolves in the second semi-final. Jones trying to feed up it, Brendan! 1-0! Don Reeve up to celebrate and to tell the team that that's the goal that matters. Distracted by their cup run, Leeds had fallen behind in the league and now they and Arsenal were hoping for a Liverpool slip-up. But with their rivals dropping points too, they only needed to overcome Leeds at Anfield to effectively take the title. were the fittest team of the generation. Nobody outplayed us, nobody outran us, nobody outbattled us. But we couldn't live with these kids today, our side of the 70s. Couldn't have lived fitness-wise with them. We, they wouldn't have got the ball off us for 70 minutes. Nowadays, you, they wouldn't have seen the ball for 70 minutes. But the last 20 minutes, they did just overpowered us. In what was to become a familiar sight, Liverpool finished the season three points clear of Arsenal. Leeds United finished four points further back, but had a cup final to look forward to. The last Saturday of the season saw an emotional farewell to the famous Charlton brothers. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow, we just can't see. Just try to think about the simple things. the rest to me. To Charlton. What a goal! Oh, great shot and a good goal! You've always had this image of being the gentleman of football. How hard's it been to keep up sometimes? Well, it's, it's, not, it's not a title that I... Uh appreciate really you know because there's, there's lots of times I really feel like having a good call at referees etc but um, it's something that's that, I, that I've had and I've had to live up to I'm afraid it's been a bit diff difficult actually
especially in a great side like this. I think it's tremendous and I'm proud of him. about the Sunderland team. What do you think of them now? They'll win the top of the pub. They'll win the cup, you think? Yes, definitely win it. Why do you think they'll beat Leeds? Well, they're better team. At Wembley, the experts were giving Sunderland no chance against the mighty Leeds. Brian Clough giving value for money as a TV pundit. I'm so blasé about it. It's uh, nothing short of a miracle. I hope Leeds don't catch him in this mood, because if they do, it'll be over in the first ten minutes. The lads seem to be able to cope with the occasion very well up to now. Are the nerves beginning to show now, do you think? Not really. The lads are quite, quite relaxed. We've seen yourself, you know. It's, uh, I don't know what's wrong, really. What's wrong with us? Is it, is it wrong, like, is it, eh? No, not at all. What's Bob Stokoe's moving like? Is he relaxed? Yeah, just the same. The whole, the whole party's been the same, you know, right throughout the week. Fabulous. Give us a prediction, Dennis. Prediction? Um, I'll see you later. Don Reeve, the Leeds United manager who's led them to greatness, and Bob Stoko, who's on the threshold of greatness with the Sunderland side. Leading his team into battle, Stoko recalled an earlier clash with Don Reeve when Stoko was at second division Berry. To my amazement, I think it was four games from the end of the 61-62 season, they came to Berry, and Don Reeve pulled me into a corner and offered me £500 to take it easy in the game, which absolutely flabbergasted me. The fact that I'd only been a player manager for about four months and he's asking me to jeopardise my career and I was very bitter towards him. The sound is absolutely deafening. Enough to stir even the most experienced. And Hughes, right there, not allowing Harvey to take any sort of chance. Ron Guthrie up for the attack. Hughes with the kick. doubt that Monty was a super goalkeeper and uh, that double save it kept us right in it and I was upfield uh, and Norman Hunter was just around me and a couple of minutes after Jimmy had made the save um, he just turns to me and he said you know it looks like it's your day Dennis. Two minutes of injury time gone the referee looked at the watch and Sunderland have won the cup from the second division Montgomery. You just take off and all of a sudden it was it was towards Monty just to sort of say thank you for winning the cup because I believe that he uh, he was the main responsibility of it and still do. Bobby Kerr, the smallest captain surely ever to lay hands on this trophy. The Royal Highness, the Duchess of Kent. And no 
wonder he kissed it. What an achievement for this man, who's known the hard times with lowly clubs at Bury, at Charlton, at Rochdale, Carlisle, and Blackpool, but now tastes the big time in the most major way possible. Just when Leeds thought that things couldn't get any worse, they got worse. They lost an ill-tempered Cup Winners' Cup final against AC Milan in Salonica. Eight is Benetti, 11, Chiarugi. Chiarugi shot. And Chiarugi acknowledging the roars from the crowd. But Liverpool won a double of sorts, adding the UEFA Cup to their league championship. So it was Liverpool. A game of two halves now on BBC Two with Dennis Waterman and more memories.